Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day here at Tailman. Thanks so much for tuning in, or brand new video rather, because we're doing double daily uploads as we are pushing through all the Lost Origin cards. We'll definitely be revisiting a ton. And today we are going to be playing with Hisuian Arcanine. Now this card is pretty unique because for no energy cost, its attack very vulnerable does 10 damage. But if you have no cards in your hand, then this attack does 150 more damage. And coincidentally, 160 is enough to two-shot every single Pokemon out there. So if you're able to attack every single turn, you should be able to trade pretty effectively against um, rule box Pokemon. Now, in order to help support Arcanine, we have Zorg with its Phantom Transformation. Watching your turn, you may choose a stage one Pokemon, except any Zorg from your discard pile. If you do, discard this Pokemon and all attached cards and put the chosen Pokemon in its place. So you get to um, put the Arcanine back into play or any of your other Stage 1 supporters, such as Maitiana. This is an anti Mew V Max card or an anti V Max card in general, where if your opponent has any Pokemon V Max in play, this Pokemon's attacks cost co 3 colorless less. So for free, you get to do another 160. You do take 50 damage back, but that's not a big deal because you were probably not going to survive the turn anyways. Now we do have also Bibral with, with its Industrious Incisors ability, helping you to draw extra cards so that you can replenish the Arcanines and then get back down to, zero, to a zero card hand. We also have Altaria with a Tempting Tune to guarantee that we have a supporter at the top of our deck each and every turn so that we can find our bosses, we can find our ball guys, or we can find our peonies to make sure, or even the grant, to make sure that our hand is zero cards before we attack. Finally, we have Oranger with the Primate Wisdom, allowing us to conserve some resources in case uh, we're going to discard our hand with Peony. And also, we have Radiant Venusaur with the Sunny Bloom ability. Once at the end of your turn, after your attack, you may use this ability, draw cards until you have four cards in your hand. So, pretty nice. You attack with Arcanine, and then you get to replenish your hand which is really fantastic to make sure that you have a good follow-up for next turn. And then we also have Manaphy for Bench Protection. Now, as mentioned for the supporters, we have Peony, Ball Guy, Boss, order, boss Disorders, and Grant. You really only need to establish more and more Pokemon along the way. That's why Ball Guy is pretty good. Um, it can also fetch uh, specifically Ultra Ball to help you trim your hand. can also fetch the Heavy Ball, I believe, yeah, in order to unlock something that was priced. Um, that you need at that moment or during that game. So pretty cool to be able to access all of these supporters, especially through Altaria. And we have Herbaloon and Choice Belt as our tool cards to retreat and increase our damage output in case it's necessary, along with Switch to make sure that nothing gets stranded in the active and Ordinary Rod for recovery purposes. Let's jump into the ladder, see what we can do after this message from our sponsors. If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. All right, so I get to go first and we have, I'd say, a pretty decent hand overall. Um, thanks to the ball guy, we will be losing an Ordinary Rod, but losing Ordinary Rod is not that bad here because you do have Zorak to just recover Arcanine back to back to back to back. Um, that boss's orders top deck is actually not that great. Um, that means we won't have access to that boss's order, so maybe a Palpat could be decent in this, but we'll see. This is a list that I did make a video before, um, Lost Origin came out right after Worlds, so, um, I'm, I'm sure it's not perfect, and I'm sure we'll be making a ton of changes, uh, when I get to play this deck on stream, um, as I mentioned, yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be going back to live streaming, um, gonna try and do that as often as I can and with that um, we will be trying out decks for longer periods of games so that we get an even deeper look at the inner workings yeah, of each deck all right the energy attachment to the radiant greninja is actually pretty pretty interesting 
uh, pretty bold for sure. All right, so let me think this through. I definitely need a backup Arcanine, and I would love to establish a Bidoof. Um, or if I establish a Zorg and I grab a Bibarel off of this, and then I discard said Bibarel, then that would actually be pretty good. So let's first check our deck to make sure that um, the pieces that we need are there. We didn't price any Growlithe, that's great. We did price one Arcanine, didn't price a Venusaur, it's also pretty good. So one um, Arcanine priced is not ideal, but we have Zorgs, as I mentioned, so that's perfectly fine um, for us at the moment. Uh, in fact, it might be better. Well, I still need to find Zorg, I guess. So it doesn't matter if I establish Growlithe or... Uh, well, I guess it does matter since I do have more Zorgs. I'll establish one of each, I guess. Okay, so we're going to do the Growlithe. We are going to search for <clears throat> the Bibrel right here. Uh, maybe the Altar is actually better. That way I can guarantee a Peony over and over. All right, so then I'll choice build this Growlithe. And then I will ball guys. So I have three cards in my hand, one of which I can discard off the quick ball to establish a Zorua. And oh wait, it's three. I thought it was two. Oh wow, this is really good. <laughs> that is a really good card. Okay, so quick ball discards one. And level ball fetches one exactly, and therefore ultra ball discards the other two, and I will have a zero card hand for my attack and the knockout. So let's go ahead and quick ball for the Radiant Venusaur. That way I have guaranteed resources after I attack. And then let's establish a Zorua, which gives us flexibility in what we can do next turn. And then we will Ultra Wall, possibly for a Bidoof. I feel like I'm so safe at the moment that I think a Bidoof is fine. That way I have potential access to Bibrel eventually. And there we go. Zero Guard Hand, take the da I mean, do the damage, and then we get to draw cards thanks to Radiant Venusaur. Very nice. I would like to draw cards. Thank you very much. All right. So boss's orders will once again be gone. My opponent tells me I have a good deck, which is very kind of them. And yeah, we're going to be two-shotting everything, uh, losing the choice belts. Doesn't really matter. Um, as I was never getting a one-shot on anything, really. Um, perhaps on a regular B with a grant but not likely and we are good to go here we are actually good to go they did use their v-star ability they're powering up the calyrex which will attack once then we will attack it back then they will attack another time they will have taken the prizes and then i will attack it and that will be three prizes total for me so that's pretty good Losing these other boss's orders means I am at the mercy of my opponent right here, but that's okay. All right, uh, pretty nice Zorg top deck. Peony guarantees that I have a zero card hand afterwards, so I can just establish more friends here, namely more Growliths and more um, Zoruas. Pretty good. Establish the Zora, and then off of the Peony, I can go ahead and grab. Um, I feel like double incense is the way to go here. Could grab a Nervalon too. Um, so yeah, I guess the Venus are getting promoted twice or three times. Yeah, if Venus are got promoted twice. I would lose the game because of that. So that is something to consider for sure. All right, I will establish the Arcanine in the active. And then I will go ahead and evolve into the Bibrel. Even though I'm not going to use it, I do like having that for backup. And we shall do 160. That's all you need to do, right? All right, I will accept the extra four cards. There is a universe where I could have chosen not to. Right, especially because of the threat of the Radiant Venus we're getting ghosted. I'm only now thinking about that. Um, that is something that could be potentially exploitable. Like, your opponent doesn't know how many switching cards or outs you play. But they could make 
an educated guess for sure. All right, no bosses orders for me means I can never target down that Crobat, which sucks. Because then I could have won the game a turn earlier, especially using Altaria to find said bosses orders. So maybe there's merit to Palpat, because you can also search for it with Peony as well. So I'm kind of liking the idea of, of, of one copy of Palpat in this deck already, especially for the bosses orders. Because that could be your win condition at some point. Just going boss if the price trade is a little closer. All right. There's one. Yeah, double cross switcher play. Yep. All right. Okay. But my opponent actually decides to knock it out. So I'm like, I'd rather them do that than leave it stranded in the active. So that's fine. Right. That is fine. Okay. With this hand, since I do have the peony, I mean, I don't have to use it, but it's, I, like it generally doesn't matter. So me being down the boss's orders though is a problem because now that dude is safe on the bench and I can never do anything about it. So that's not ideal. Hmm. All right, nothing relevant priced in terms of basics. I will go ahead and establish another Arcanine right here. And then I'll go ahead and quick ball away for a Zorua. I don't believe that deck plays recovery, though maybe I'd be better off with Manaphy. I guess I could have saved the bosses with Oranguru, so maybe I also should have prioritized having the Oranguru to protect the boss's orders. So that's definitely on me. I don't remember if that deck plays recovery or not. I'm going to guess no. I think it makes sense for it not to play recovery, but I guess we'll find that out. Um, all right, so Peony. And grab one herbal balloon since they're down their tool scrapper. And I honestly think that's it. That's all I'm going to grab. Just the one card. I'll do this and very vulnerable. All right. I feel very vulnerable with a zero guard hand and um, no bosses orders available for me. <laughs> I do feel quite vulnerable in that regard. All right. Piku Miku. So if I had the other Altaria, now that they've discarded that um, that canceling cologne, I could actually just win by promoting that. Because then they would have one cost, but that's it. They wouldn't be able to finish the game off. So that's also something else to consider. All right. I don't think there's any card that I would draw that I wouldn't be able to play. <clears throat> okay, and that is a switch. So I'm not going to risk the b barrel right now. Just going to establish the Arcanine. And switch into it and just take the KO. I do know I have quite a few interesting pieces priced. Um, that will be useful in terms of just being able to attack or making sure I can trim my hand after I use b barrel to get to a zero card hand. All right. This is where my opponent could go double cross switcher into KO Bibral to try and make me not be able to attack again. Um, Ultra Ball and the Ice Rider. So, barely, we're gonna barely be able to win this game. Because my opponent needs to attack three more times to win the game, and after I attack into the Calyrex, I will only need to attack two more times so we're barely barely winning this right i'm guessing they're holding the air balloon right yeah i was gonna say they can't possibly be hoping to draw into the double cross switcher right here All right, so there's a knockout. Okay. 
And all right. So you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use industries and scissors before evolving. Okay, perfect. So I get to evolve here. I get to evolve here, and then I also get to peony. I'm down all my switches, so I don't I can't afford to bench the Radiant Venusaur anymore. However, I certainly can put back two Arcanines, right? And then play the lovable as well. Yeah, I have an Arcanine ready to attack. And if the Arcanine is not getting targeted, then that means I can just use it to attack again next turn. Ooh, but you know what? If I top deck an Arcanine... No, that's fine. I'll put back two Arcanines here. If I top deck an Arcanine, I can simply go into my Tiana. Yeah, so I don't think there's any way for my opponent to win now. I would need another attacker, but I can't KO to take a prize card next turn. If they had gone into double Palkia, then that would have been better for them. Oh, you know what? If they promote the Palkia, and I attack into it, and then they evolve and attack me, and KO me, then they do win. Alright. Double cross switcher. Okay. That was a surprising play. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gonna promote the Palkia here. Because I lost my boss's orders. Oh, wow, what? Okay, I mean, I guess they didn't know. Um, but yeah, we're good now. Because now we can just attack with my Tiana. Now we can just attack with my Tiana. And like I said, they don't know my deck, but I can tell that those bots of orders are very, very key, you know? And my Tiana actually save the day right here all right gg that was that was interesting though for sure let's go all right here we go game number two we are going to give away a mulligan right here not ideal but it is what it is we're up against a middle deck we're also going first so we'll see okay so decent dish hand once again we have a card that we would prefer not to get rid of, but there's not much we can do about it. With the Ordinary Rod. Okay, seems like we're up against Mew B Max, so this is where um, I definitely need to establish another Pokemon, right? Based off the fact that I'm about to get KO'd, I'm gonna bench a Zorua here, as I am holding Zoroarks in my hand, and the Mytiana is in fact not right, so I could potentially. Um, just win by attacking with my Tiana, honestly. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully we don't get attacked with the... or KO'd through the Genesect. Then we would be able to knock out through a Choice Belt and take the first two prizes, which would be amazing. So yeah, this seems like a very, very good matchup for this deck, as long as the my Tiana isn't priced. All right, attaches to the Mew. Which is a good sign, that means my Growlithe has now officially survived. Well, I guess not officially. They could still go Alessa into Switch, into Power Tablet, into KO. So never mind. That will only make it um, easier for me to take the knockout. Okay, they do play the Power Tablet, but they play a Silene. And put the Battle VIP Pass at the top. Interesting. So they must have a way to draw cards here. Rotom phone. Okay. Interesting. And another Rotom phone. Okay, so they'll be able to find that battle VIP pass. 
They have played as a border now, however, so there's no way my Growlithe will be going down here. Which is pretty good. So, Jenny for one. I call Genesec Jenny. <laughs> and Mew, Mewy. And there's a Battle VIP pass, so now they'll be able to play and do more stuff. Alright. We're just patiently waiting here to knock out my opponent's Jenny. Wow. <laughs> just full on Genesec draw. Jenny number two. All the Jennies are out here to play. Pokey stop as well. Maybe this is the version that doesn't play less of Sparkle and Meloeta, which I think is absolutely not the best version of Mew. It's playing Roxanne as well, which is not common. All right, they just choose to grab the Mew VMAX right there. Yeah, as long as I don't horribly dead draw, this is going to be a very easy game, I feel. And there's even merit to using the Pokestop since I play so many Quick Balls, Level Balls, Ultra Balls, and Instances. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that first. Choice Belt as well. All right, very nice. Very nice Pokestop there for my opponent. But yeah, I'm really not concerned. Not at all. All right, my biggest concern right now with this list is uh, Venusaur getting stranded in the active. That's my only and biggest concern. All right, there's the Quick Ball. There's an Origorio. Well, that's unfortunate. And of all the Pokemon, I was not expecting them to go grab that. That does save them from my Tiena one hit KOing the Mew. Unless I have a choice belt attached. But once that Mew goes down, it's game over. So that's all I need to worry about at this point. All right, we're going to start with the Pokestop. Only fetching one quick ball, unfortunately. We'll go ahead and establish a Zorua. Seems pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and evolve. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and evolve. Then I'll go ahead and quick ball the Zorark so I can put the cards back. And I will be grabbing the Venusaur. To guarantee that I have draw after I attack with Arcanine. I'll play the Ordinary Rod. I'm feeling the attachment of the Herbaloon to the Venusaur to fake out my opponent that I do have a way to retreat on so that they don't boss it up. And then I'll go Peony for an incense and a quick ball. And of the incense, I'm just gonna get the Mightyena into a discard pile. Then that makes the Zorg an immediate threat, which is pretty good. Mm. Yeah, so there's the Mightyena, and then we will quick ball away. Probably establishing. Hmm. I'm feeling the Oranguru, but I'm also feeling the Growlithe. I think I want to go for Growlithe. It's just like two shotting this dude is also fine. And there we go. Very vulnerable. Um, the Oricorio meant I couldn't just grab a choice belt and knock out the Genesect, but that's fine. Pretty good hand after the Venusaur draw. <clears throat> Definitely have all the tools necessary. Actually, no, I don't. I am missing the um, the choice belt to knock out the Mew. But if my opponent um, doesn't knock out one of my Zorks, then I can transform one Zork into Altaria to put a Peony. Oh wait, no, but how would I draw it? No, yeah, I would Ultra Ball away the Altaria. Oh, interesting. All right, so people are really going or targeting the Radiant Venusaur. That's okay. All right, so off the Ultra Ball, I'm going to grab Orangu, right? 
I'm going to be discarding the Altaria and either the Zoro or whatever I top deck, grabbing the Orango, evolving one into Altaria, one into my Tiana with Altaria. I need to make sure I have a card left in my hand to trade for the supporter that Altaria fetches, which might actually... Well, I do have this as well, so focus top will probably do it. And I think once I knock out this new VMAX, it's game over. So that's what I'll be doing. All right. Let's try this. Perfect. Two cards. All right. So I need to do this. And then I do need to ultra wall away these two for the Oranguru. So that I can put the Peony at the top and then with Altaria and then get it with Oranguru. So then I will be doing Phantom Transformation on the Altaria. Then I will be using Tempting Tune. Wait, I'm going to be benching this. I'm going to be attaching this. Yeah. So Tempting Tune for the Peony. <clears throat> and then with the Peony, I will be grabbing Choice Bell and something else. We shall see. Uh, um choice build and possibly maybe the boss honestly no because i can grab a supporter anytime so i should just honestly a level ball for a bidu doesn't sound like a bad idea at all um, all right i do need to phantom transformation first so right now i am doing um, 300 damage, so not enough. Now I am doing enough. And the Maitiana might even survive the attack as well, which is pretty good. And I'll establish the Bidoof. I do have both of my switches, just in case uh, my opponent doesn't bench on our Mew VMAX. Um, Maitiana no longer would be knocking out or attacking or doing anything, really. So I might have to peony for a switch to continue my attack. All right, solid prizes. I'm done one process orders, which is not ideal. But yeah, my opponent literally has nothing else to attack with, right? Absolutely nothing else. So what? Yeah, there we go. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I can see the issue of the switches though, but that new that version of Mew Max is just not good at all. Um, this deck's pretty good. It's looking great and like i said i look forward to playing more of this deck and tweaking it more when i live stream it one of these days playing around 10 anywhere between 10 to 20 games with it and see how it feels overall and changes and everything i already have some changes in the back of my mind but i'll leave them for the stream thanks so much for tuning in thanks so much for the support um and make sure you're subscribed yeah because a lot of you are not subscribed yeah it doesn't take anything to just click the button and you get to support the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.